Good morning. It is Friday, finally, and we are ready for math. We are continuing to work with our decimals, and you should have page 301 torn out. It looks like this, and it says at the top, compare and multiply. Compare and multiply. So that is exactly what we're going to be doing today. We are going to be comparing the fractions and determining which one's bigger and which one's smaller, and then we are going to be multiplying the decimals together. Okay, so quick lesson before we enter in the comparing. Remember yesterday we talked about equivalent decimals and how to make equivalent decimals, and that zeros behind the numbers, if they are behind a decimal, can be added or taken away and doesn't change the number. So to make it easy to compare, this is my top hint, okay? So if I have these two numbers, 8 tenths or 72 hundredths, the easiest way for me to compare them is to make them the same length. And since I can just take this one and add a zero to the back without changing the number at all, I'm only making an equivalent number, then I can look at the number behind the decimal to see which one's bigger. Is 80 bigger or 72? 80. Okay, so some people would look at these two numbers and say, oh, that one's bigger because it's longer. That does not work well with decimals. You cannot use that explanation because you can make them the same by adding zeros to the back. So we need to do that. We need to take this one. We need to add our zero, and then we see that this really is 80, and this is 72. So this one is bigger. So you're going to be comparing list of numbers today. Here it says, write the decimals from least to greatest. Okay, before I even start, I would take your pencil, and up here I would make all of the numbers the same size. So if this one has three digits behind it, then every one of these numbers needs to have three digits behind it. And how do I do that? I add a zero. So I'm going to add a zero there. Here I'm going to add two zeros. And here I'm going to add a zero. Now I can just compare them. I can look at the number as a whole. 415, 510, 500, 450. And you know how to do this. So which one is the smallest? We have to do least to greatest. So this one would be the first one. Now, easiest for me is just going to be to mark above them. So I can help you but not have to use this pen to write out the full number. So I would mark this one as one. The second one would be this one, right? Because that would be 450. This one would turn out to be 500, so that one would be third. And this one would be the biggest. Okay, that one would wind, wind up being 51 hundredths, but putting my zero there helps me to look at it as, um, so that they're all the same. Okay, let's do the same thing here and make sure we have the same amount of zeros behind the decimal. Now, this one is actually interesting because look at what they're doing. They have actually had a different whole number in front. So the decimal here has 1 and 98 hundredths, but look at where the decimal is on this one. What's your whole number? Your whole number here is 19, which makes that definitely the biggest because I look at whole number before I look at anything else. So the whole number for this one is 19 and 8 tenths, so that's bigger. Then this one has a 1 as a whole number, and these both have zeros. So then I compare it. This one says 198, this one says 189. 189 is smaller, right, than 198. So. Actually, I did this backwards, didn't I? Oh, I did largest. I did this wrong. Okay, let's do this one again. So if that's the biggest, 
I was thinking biggest first. So let's go backwards a little bit. If this is the biggest, then that would be 4. Then, next biggest would be this one. Then, this one would be the smallest. And then that one would be 2. Now, I've got it right. I was thinking of it reverse. We always want to go in this direction right now, least to greatest. So, let's look at this one again. So, we've got three numbers. We don't have any whole numbers. We only have the decimals we're dealing with. I'm going to add a zero to this one. I don't know why this keeps pausing on me today. I'm going to add a zero to that one today. And then I'm going to look at the numbers behind the zero. This is 11, 21, 2, and 120. So the smallest is this one. This is the next smallest. And then would come this one. And then would come this one. So by making them all the same, that gives us a really good idea how to make it clear. So I'm going to add a zero to this here, and that's going to help me. Now they all have sixes in the whole numbers, so that's not going to make a difference. So I'm going to look at the numbers behind. 53, 50, 35, and 48. So the smallest is 35, then 48, then 50, then 53. Okay? Now we're comparing, now we want to do greater than or less than. Wow, look at where your decimal is. Be careful. This is 73 in a whole number, and this is 7. So what is definitely bigger? Anything with a whole number with 73, and we don't even need to look at the decimal part. Now this, the whole number is both the same, 4 and 4. But here, the 3 is in the hundredths place. Remember, you can add your zero to compare it easily. The three is in the hundredths here. The two is in the tenths, so that would make that a 20. So that would definitely be bigger. Okay, your whole number here is 8, but look at your whole number here, 819. That's definitely bigger. Okay, there's no decimal here, which means that this is 215 which means that that is definitely bigger than the other one, which has no whole number at all. Okay, now look at where your decimal is here. It's behind the 9, which means there is a 9 as a whole number, and there's no whole number here. So that means that that one is bigger. Okay, that's the comparing part today. Now we're going to look at be able to move my screen up. Give me just a minute. Now we go. Okay. They want us to round the decimal first and then estimate to give us an idea. Now this is going to help you know where the decimal goes um, when you're finished, but I'm going to give you another way to know where the decimal goes also. But one way to do it is to know exactly the numbers that you're dealing with and how they work together. So let's round this decimal. So 4, we're going to round it to the nearest whole number. So I look at the 4, I look behind it, that's less than five, so I'm going to keep it as a four, and then I keep that whole number. So four times three is twelve. Now you're going to come over here and multiply the three times this whole number. Ignore the decimal at first. That's all there is to it. You just multiply like normal. You know how to multiply. So you ignore the decimal while you're multiplying, and then you add the decimal later. Okay? So we're going to multiply. 3 times 6 is 18. Carry your 1. 3 times 7 is 21. Plus 1 is 22. 
carry the 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5, and then 3 times 4 is 12. Now, now I worry about the decimal, okay? Because I estimated my answer at 12, I know that my decimal is going to go right here because I know my answer is not going to be close to 1. It's not going to be close to 125 or even 1,252. It's going to be close to 12. So I'm going to put my decimal right here after the 12. Okay, so let's estimate this one. 7 and 6 tenths, because 6 is more than 5, that estimates at 8, right? 8, and I'm going to keep the 4 the same. 8 times 4 is 32. No idea why that's doing that to me today. Okay, 8 times 4 is 32. Now we come over here and we multiply like normal, forgetting the decimal. 4 times 6 is 24. I put the 4 down. I carry the 2. 2 times 7 is 28 plus 2 is 30. Now, because I know my answer is supposed to be close to 32, I'm going to put my decimal there. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you the other way to know where to put your decimal here. So I'm going to round this to 5. I'm going to keep the 2 the same. 5 times 2 is 10. Now I'm going to multiply. 6 times 2 is 12. Carry my 1. 2 times 0 is 0. Plus 1 is 1. 2 times 5 is 10. Now here's the other way to know where to put your 0. How many numbers are behind a decimal here? Or know where to put your decimal. There are 1, 2 numbers behind a decimal. That means that in your answer, there need to be one, two numbers behind a decimal. One, two, and I'm going to put it here. But another way to do it is just to know what your answer should be close to. Is it going to be a 10? Is it going to be a 100? Is it going to be a 1,000? And then you know where to put that decimal. Okay, I want you to complete these. And let's look at the back. So you have some more to complete. You know how to do that now. You're multiplying and then figuring out where that decimal goes. That is it. So if there are three numbers here behind your decimal, then there need to be three numbers behind the decimal in your answer. If there are two numbers behind a decimal, then there needs to be two in your answer. It's as simple as that. Your word problems are simply multiplying. This is multiplying. And this is understanding where your numbers go. So let's look at this together. If this one is 5 times 1 tenth, that means that the 5 is going to be in the tenths place. And then on this one, the 6 is going to be in the hundredths place and then the 7. So this one should look like 0.567. So there, it's going to be A. That one's done. This one is a 5 in the whole number and 67 thousandths. That means that there's three numbers behind the decimal. Where do you see that? I see that here, right? So that should be B. Okay. Five ones and 76 hundredths. That means there's two numbers behind the decimal. So that would mean that we're dealing with number 27 here, right? So that should be C. 576 thousandths, no whole number, so we're looking at this one. And then last, 5 and 706 thousandths. That would be this one that we have left, but it's always good to read it and make sure you're right. Now, for the bottom, that's exactly what we did before. You're going to put, you're going to estimate the product. That means what do you think the answer is going to be? So round this, 2.9 is closest to 3, 
3 times 3 is 9. That's your product. Now you're going to decide which one of these is correct. And based on this, I don't even have to do the math, do I? I know that it's going to be this one. There's no way it can be this one if my estimate is 9. So see how that gives you an idea. Being able to estimate quickly gives you an idea what your answer is going to be close to. Okay, I want you to make up your own decimals and give me a group of three that you put in order. Okay, so for example, in your comment, you might say 0 0.75. 0 0.77 and 0 0.89, okay, in your order. Or if you want to get really good, you could just make that 0 0.8 because you're making the places different and you're understanding that this one is still bigger, okay, because it's got an 8 in the tens place instead of a 7. So give me three numbers that you're going to put in order, least to greatest. That's what I want in the comments, okay? They have to be decimals.